Welcome, Ron Caps. Welcome to Music for the Mind. Thank you so much. It's, it's thrilling to be here, really. Yeah, we're thrilled to have you. So for, for people that are just kind of tuning in to our Music for the Minds videos that we've been highlighting all week, um, Music for the Mind is an initiative by the Canadian Mental Health Association of New Brunswick. And it's, a, it's, it's an album that we produced of singers, songwriters, um, people who want to tell their mental health journey through song. And we put a call out and the call was answered in droves and we narrowed it down to 12 songs to be included in this album. And it's an album that, um, you know, we hope is going to resonate uh, with a lot of people out there knowing that you're not alone in your mental health journey. So tonight we're going to feature Ron Caps, and I'm going to introduce you as well to Bob Mercero. And Bob is a music writer from Fredericton, New Brunswick, and he's written several books on Canadian music, including the best-selling Top 100 Canadian Albums book. Welcome, Bob, and thank you so much to both of you for, for volunteering your time here with the Canadian Mental Health Association of New Brunswick. Thanks, Lori. Hi, Ron. How are you? Good, Bob. I'm great. Thanks. Good. Look, uh, thanks an awful lot for, for the song. First off, it's a, uh, really powerful. I hope uh, everybody pause and takes a, takes a good listen to it. It uh, uh, comes from your life story. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know how we can, we'll get into a little bit in the, in, about where, where the, um, where the uh, idea for this song, that, this particular song came from. But first, a little backstory would probably be great for everyone. You're a vet. Uh, yeah, I was a soldier. I yeah, was a soldier yeah. for 25 years. Yeah. When uh, uh, so that that is that informs that has informed a lot of what you do. Um, when you got out of the military, you were in a tough situation, right? Yeah, I was. Um, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder in 1996, initially. I'd just come off a peacekeeping mission down in the Central African Republic. And um, not long after that, I was uh, back in Central Africa. And not long after that, I was in Afghanistan and then off to Iraq and then to Darfur for two different tours. And, you know, a lot of this, I, I, I didn't, take enough downtime, enough time between these deployments to take care of myself. And, you know, the PTSD just got unbearable. It was, I was suicidal and I was medevaced home, medically evacuated home after uh, a failed suicide attempt while I was in Darfur on my second tour there as a peace. Now, from these experiences, obviously intense, obviously something that uh you know you you needed time uh and and a lot of care to deal with one of the things that came out of this was was writing about it correct yeah yes. so what did you do um well part of my job when i was still on active duty was to report what was happening on the ground i mean i was sent out a lot of times to be you know the person on the ground explaining what was happening there back to an audience, you know, and I, I knew that, I knew how to write. I was a good writer. I was effective at my job, but I didn't really understand how writing was going to be, how important it was going to be to my recovery. But when I came back, I was getting treatment. I was taking medication. I was seeing a psychiatrist talking to psych psychologists and social workers. And um, I wasn't improving at a rate that I sort of felt comfortable, that, that I wanted to be. And what I found out was that I had a lot of stories in my head that needed to get out or that I needed to get control of. And so by writing, I, I, I started to understand those stories a little bit better. I would just write the story down and some in longhand, some on the computer. And I figured out that um, either I was gonna control those stories or they were gonna control me. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wrote down either you control the story or the story controls you on a piece of paper. And I thumbtacked it on the wall next to my 
uh, computer at home. And then I kept writing and I wrote for years. You know, I had started writing some of these stories down, you know, when I was in Kosovo and I was in Kosovo and Rwanda, Iraq, Afghanistan, Darfur, all these different deployments. And so I kept some of the stories written down. I had some of the stories written down, but I started to expand them and really to sort of explore what happened on the ground, not just the events, but I really wanted to capture the effects to the people on the ground, the Rwandans, the Kosovars, the Iraqis, the Afghans, and through that to sort of explore what happened to me and ended up turning all of that writing into a book that came out in 2014 called Seriously Not All Right, Five Wars in 10 Years. And then about three years ago, I, I started songwriting. I started trying to write some of these stories down in songs and you know, here I am three years later. Uh, it's, uh, you know, for somebody who also has written uh, for much of their career uh, and made uh, little attempts at songwriting, it's a whole new different game. I'm pretty impressed that you picked it up. Had you been a musician as well through your life? Um, early on, yeah. When I was a, when I was a kid, I mean, a, an eight-year-old kid or something, I, my mom took me to church one morning and it was one of those things that we were near a, a school of music and somebody came in and said, all right, all the second graders come with me. You're going to be in a choir. Right. <laughs> but I found out I could sing. And all through elementary school and high school and even into college, I was a musician. I played guitar and sang in, in restaurants and bars. And that's how I paid my way through university. Um, I was really lucky. But then, you know, I joined the military and it was you know, 30 years right. between between gigs. So <laughs> I had a lot to, you know, I had a lot of rust to scrape off, but you know, the, the muscle memory as deep as it was, I was able to get some of it back. Yeah. Luckily, well, it I came back fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, music's always been a part of my life. It's just, I hadn't been performing and I hadn't been writing songs for 35 years. Right. And then I just well, started. You've, you've already put out your first uh, EP, right? Uh, I, yeah, I did. Back in June, we put out, um, forgive me for this, <laughs> Shameless I'm Plug. happy to plug. Absolutely shameless plug. <laughs> EP right here, it's called Trying to Catch Amnesia. Excellent. It's got five songs. All of them are mine. I uh, worked with a producer uh, over in uh, Colorado and uh, some performers from Nashville and Austin and had worked with a bunch of people in, in the local area as well. But there's only four of us on the record. Um, and all of the songs are about sort of the experience of veterans who are returning and their family members. So, and that's, of course, trying to catch amnesia. It's, it's, it's a, a story, not the story, but a story of a veteran who is really struggling with his mind being in two places here at home and there back in the war. Well, that's the song that you've uh, you've uh, given us for uh, the music for the Mind uh, CD, and appreciate it immensely. I love the title. I love the line, uh, "Trying to Catch Amnesia," which is, uh, I think, we've all been there where we <laughs> want to forget. Uh, that's a uh, gosh, I, you know, that that that's one of yours, is it? <laughs> that yeah. line. Oh. You get yeah. a prize just for that, Ron. <laughs> You know, I I have a I, I think I, I I assume other writers do this as well that you know you keep a little notebook with you or you're always banging something out on the keyboard. Oh, song idea, you know, and I write it down. But that came to me during the 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 crafting of the song. You know, I just had this sort of image in my head of um, someone's partner finding them standing out in the rain by themselves and as soon as that image came to me i said and she'll find him somewhere standing in the rain trying to catch amnesia 
And I was like, "Woo, I'm done. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. That's a great line. Yeah. Uh, now, Funny how inspiration uh, comes. Yeah. With, uh, by moving into music, uh, you're now seeing a completely different uh, way to connect with people. Uh, uh, is it, uh, what's the difference between writing about it and singing about it? You know, honestly, to me, from my end of it, you know, um, putting the putting a song together or putting a story together for, for the page, it's it's not that much difference. I mean, it, both of them are very hard, and I have to work very hard at that. So I think it's mostly the audience, you know, my listeners or my readers' experience is very different. Um, my writing is, my, my creative writing, 90% of that is nonfiction. You know, this happened to me and here's what, here's how I did it and here's what it did to me and here's what's happened since and here's why it's important to you. Classic sort of creative nonfiction work. And all of my songs have elements of my story, but they're, they're little fictions. They're little sort of flash fictions, you know, um, so that's the big difference to me. But from an audience standpoint, I think you know, readers, people who come to a reading to hear someone read from their own book and people who go to a restaurant or a bar or just pick up a CD to listen to music, they're seeking different paths to the same story or, you know. And so I think that's the real difference is in the way that uh, either readers or listeners approach the story, and I don't know if that makes. <laughs> I don't know if that yeah, makes. Yeah, no, sense. I get you. It's a, it's a. Uh, I, I think in some ways people are a little more uh, susceptible to music. You know, it can you can sh you can surprise them a little. They don't know what they didn't know that they were uh, in that mood, but they get it when they when they hear it. Or it might be even something that. They didn't want to think about it. I think that's true. Exactly. Um, one of the things that I consciously try to do with my songwriting is to have a little dissonance between the harmony, the melody, the chord structure, and the lyrics. You know, so that the the chord structure and the and the the melody might see it's all a major key, it's kind of happy and everything's going on. And then there's this undercurrent of, oh my God, what is happening in this story? And that sort of dissonance, you know, it's like in sort of in, in bluegrass music, the band's playing in a major key and the singer is singing in a minor key and that's how you get that, that dissonant sound. I and I, I think we can do that with, you know, playing the lyrics off of the harmonic structure. And that's one of the things that I've tried to do with um, Trying to Catch Amnesia, but also there's another song on the, the EP that's called Prehab that has this sort of lovely little melody, kind of haunting melody. And it starts off with this, the line that's, you know, things are so much simpler since I lost that pesky job, which always gets a laugh. Mm -hmm. But by the time you're into the third or fourth line of the story, you realize this is not a funny story. Yeah, And so I, I do try to to pull those strings a little bit yeah well strings pulled here congratulations uh, job done thank you so much uh, look and I'll, I'll anybody watching uh, uh, just google ron and, and find uh, either his his writing or his singing uh songwriting um and uh powerful stuff and thanks so much for sharing your uh, your story and for giving us a, a new way to, uh, to appreciate um, uh, everything that you've seen, you know. Uh, you're, you're, you're a reporter when you were out there and now you're able to, uh, to, to let us all know uh, something that, you know, with, from your eyes and, 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 and know, that, uh, know that there's a true story and, uh, and a true person behind it. So. Thank you much for that. Thanks for thanks for giving the song to us. No, thank you guys. This is what you're doing, Lori, with uh, this group is so important. And as soon as I heard about it, I, I knew I wanted to be a part of it. 
So thank you for what you're doing. It's it's so, so important to get these stories out there and just honestly, just let people know there's, there, there is a path home and don't be afraid to get help because the people we can't help are the ones who don't ask for it. Yeah, so exactly. thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Exactly, appreciate Ron. Thank, you know, Ron, um, you know, with having um, Canada's biggest military base right in our backyard here in Fredericton uh, or, or Mokdo, Gagetown, um, you know, when I read the lyrics to your song, I thought, wow, like those are powerful lyrics. And there's a lot of people that will resonate. I mean, not only from a personal standpoint, but from, from you know, in the military as well, that will resonate with your story. And, um, you know, the biggest reason why we did Music for the Mind is we want people to know that they're not alone in their mental health journey. And, yep. um trying to catch amnesia it was was such a powerful song so i really thank you for submitting it to music for the mind and um for your support for mental health and your passion for mental health because it really comes across in your music so thank, thank you. you so much i really appreciate the opportunity thank you and thank you bob again for a, a great interview and you know helping us learn more about the stories behind the songs we really appreciate it